Hello students, welcome to this new video presentation on mechanical properties of solids part 1 which is given in chapter number 9 of physics for class 11. As you all know, we studied the rotation and motion of solids which depended on how mass is distributed within the body. We restricted ourselves to the simpler situation of rigid bodies. A rigid body generally means a hard solid object having a definite shape and size. But in reality, bodies can be stretched, compressed and bent. Even the toughest steel bar can be bent by application of a large external force. This means the solid bodies are not perfectly rigid. In this chapter and in this particular part, we will study about elastic behavior of solids, stress and strain and Hooke's law. The elastic behavior of material plays an important role in engineering design. For example, while designing a building, knowledge of elastic properties of material like steel, concrete, etc. is essential. The same is true in design of bridges, automobiles, ropeways, etc. One could also ask, can we design an aeroplane which is very light but sufficiently strong? Another question can be, can we design an artificial limb which is lighter but stronger? Why does a railway track has to be particular shape like I? Why is glass brittle while brass is not? Answer to such questions begin with the study of how relatively simple kinds of loads or forces act to deform different solids. In this chapter, we shall study the elastic behavior and mechanical properties of solid, which would answer many such questions. This is a very simple talk topic. Please listen carefully. Solids. A solid is that state of matter in which its constituent atoms or molecules are held strongly at the position of minimum potential energy and it has a definite shape and volume. Thus, a solid has definite shape and size. In order to change or deform the shape or size of your body, an external force is required. If you stretch a helical spring by gently pulling at its ends, the length of the spring increases slightly. When you leave the ends of the spring, it regains its original size and shape. Hence, such bodies are called solids. Elasticity. The property of a body by virtue of which the body tends to regain its original size and shape when the applied force is removed is known as elasticity and the deformation caused is known as the elastic deformation. Such substances are called elastic substances. That means, as you know, when we apply a force to a body, it changes in shape and size. But when the force is removed, it has to regain its original shape. Hence, such substances are called elastic substances. The reason for elasticity is, on applying the deforming forces, Restoring forces are developed. When the deforming force is removed, these restoring forces bring the molecules of the solid to their respective equilibrium position, that is, R is equal to R naught, and hence the body regains its original form. Perfectly elastic body. If 
on removal of deforming forces, the body regains its original configuration completely. Please underline the words configuration completely, original configuration completely, then it is said to be perfectly elastic. For example, a quartz fiber and phosphor is the nearest approach to the perfectly elastic body. Elasticity. The property of matter by virtue of which it does not regain its original shape and size after removal of the deforming force is called plasticity. Please read once again. It is the property in which even if we remove the force, deforming force, it does not regain the original shape and size. For example, if you apply a force to a lump of putty or a mud, they have no gross tendency to regain their previous shape and they get permanently deformed. Such substances are called plastic and this property is called plasticity. <coughs> Perfectly plastic bodies are those which do not have any tendency to recover to its original configuration on removal of the deforming force. It is said to be perfectly plastic. Paraffin wax, wet clay are the nearest approach to the perfectly plastic body. Putty and mud are close to the ideal plastics. Practically, there is no material which is either perfectly elastic or perfectly plastic. The elastic behavior of solids can be understood in terms of microscopic nature of solids. We know that in a solid, each atom or molecule is surrounded by neighboring atoms or molecules. These are bounded together by interatomic or intermolecular forces and stay in stable equilibrium position. When a solid is deformed, the atoms or molecules are displaced from their equilibrium positions, causing a change in the interatomic distances. When the deforming force is removed, the interatomic forces tend to derive them back to their original position. Thus, the body regains its original shape and size. The restoring mechanism can be visualized by taking a model of spring ball system shown in the figure on the screen. Here, the balls black in color, which are black in color, represent the atoms and the springs. Springs represent interatomic forces. In, if we try to displace any ball from its position, equilibrium position, the spring system tries to restore the ball back to its original position. Thus, the elastic behavior of solids is explained in terms of microscopic nature of solids. Elastic behavior of solids. We will define additionally some characteristics of elastic and plastic materials. The first one is elastic limit. The maximum deforming force in which a body retains its property of elasticity is called elastic limit of the material of the body. I will read once again. The maximum deforming force up to which, please note up to which, a body retains its property of elasticity is called 
elastic limit of the material of the body. So, elastic limit is the property of the body, whereas elasticity is the property of the material of the body. Elastic fatigue. The temporary loss of elastic property because of action of repeated alternating <coughs> deforming force is called elastic fatigue. As you know, when we apply a deforming force, the shape and size change. And when we remove this force, it regains its original shape and size to a greater extent. When we repeat this process again and again, again and again, it the material loses its elastic properties. This is called elastic fatigue. That is, I will define once again, the temporary loss of elastic properties because of action of repeated alternating deforming forces is called elastic fatigue. This is due to one, the bridges are declared unsafe after a long time of their use. Second example is, in the case of a spring balance, we get wrong readings when we are using it for a long time. The third example is we are able to break a wire. When we repeatedly bend a wire again and again, we are able to break the wire. The third behavior is elastic after effect. The time delay in which the substance regains its original condition after the removal of deforming force is called the elastic after effect. Please note, elastic after effect is the time delay in which the substance regain its original condition. Condition means shape and size when once we remove the deforming force is called elastic after effect. It is negligible for materials like quartz, phosphor, bronze, etc. and large for glass fiber. Now we will take up the next section, stress and strain. First we will discuss about stress. When forces are applied on your body in such a manner that the body is still in static equilibrium, it is deformed to a small or a large extent depending upon the nature of the material of the body and the magnitude of the deforming force. The deformation may not be noticeable visually in many materials, but it is definitely there. When a body is subjected to a deforming force, a restoring force is developed in the body. This restoring force is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the applied force. The internal restoring force acting per unit area of the cross section of the deformed body is called stress. Therefore, stress is equal to force divided by area that is equal to F divided by A where F is the force and A is the cross-sectional area. The unit of stress is Newtons per meter square in SI system or Dines per centimeter square in CGS system or it can be it is also called as Pascal or PA. The stress developed in your body depends on how the external forces are applied over it. On this basis, there are two types of stresses. First one, the normal stress. When the force is applied normal to the surface, then it is called the normal stress. The change in the length delta L to the original length capital L of the body 
is known as longitudinal strain. Please take the case of cylinder, a cylinder wherein there may be an increase in length delta L and the original length uh, is capital L. Therefore, longitudinal strain equal to delta L by L. Let it be equation 1. The second type of stress is shear or tangential stress. Shear or tangential stress comes in picture when successive layers of solid move on each other. That is when there is a relative displacement between various layers of solids. The two figures for normal and shear and tangential tangential stresses are shown in the next slides. Normal stress. There are two types of normal stresses. The first case is longitudinal stress. Please see the figure on the right hand side. Here a cylinder of length L is acted upon by two forces F. The first force is acting on the cross section of the cylinder which is optic which is normal to the cross section area that is acting vertically upwards. There is another force F which is acting on the cross sectional area downwards. Due to these forces the length increases the length becomes l plus delta l the deforming force this f is also called deforming force the deforming force is applied normal to the cross section area cross section area is taken for the calculation of stress the longitudinal stress produced due to increase in the length of a body under deforming force is called tensile stress. So these two forces result in increase in length and hence it is called tensile strength. In another case, if we reverse the direction of forces, that is if we compresses, then there is a longitudinal stress which produced due to decrease in length. So the reversed forces compress the cylinder and there is a decrease in length of the body under a deforming force called compressional stress. Tensile or compressive stress can also be termed as longitudinal stress. In both the cases, there is a change in the length of the cylinder. The second type of normal stress is bulk or volume stress. In this case, the forces are applied to solids or liquids or gases. The deforming force is applied normal to the surface at all points. That means in bulk or volume stress, forces are applied vertically as well as horizontally. That is at normal at all points. Please underline at all points. It is equal to the change in pressure because change in pressure is responsible for the change in volume. Shear or tangential stress. Shear or tangential stress comes into picture when successive layers of solid move on each other. That is, when there is relative displacement between various layers of a solid. Please see the figure on left hand side above. Here, the cylinder of length capital L is subjected to a tangential force F in the above on the upper surface in the 
direction left to right this is acting from left to right due to this force and since the bottom surface is fixed there is an angle delta t created due to movement of the upper surface and the displacement is delta x thus there is a shearing strain this is given by shearing strain or stress is given by delta x by l where delta x is the change in length and l capital l is the original length that is equal to tan of the angle theta as this is the angle theta as shown in the figure which is approximately equal to the angle theta itself let it be equation 2 here in this case that is in the case of shear or tangential stress the deforming force is applied tangential to one of the surfaces one of the faces area of calculation is the area of the face on which force is applied it produces change in shape and volume remaining the same the figure on the right hand side also shows a similar example wherein a book is pressed with one hand on the upper side as shown in the figure due to this for this pressure by hand there is a force created which is on the right hand side due to this force the upper pages undergo a change successive layers of this book move on each other as shown in the figure similarly there are cases when the forces are applied on the area total area which is normal to each and every point in the body so this pressure this shear or tangential stress produces change in shape but the volume remains the same in the case of a book the volume remains same and there is another case in the third case where it is subjected to so many pressure the volume also remains same but there is a change in the shape now we will discuss about the strain the ratio of change in configuration to the original configuration is called the strain that is the change in con configuration to original configuration is called the strain it has no dimensions please note that strain does not have either def dimensions or units strain are three of three types linear strain a linear strain is defined as change in length divided by original length that is the change in length is small n and original length is capital l linear strain in the direction of deformation deforming force is called longitudinal strain and in a direction perpendicular to the force is called the lateral strain so here please see the figure here a cube e of length l is subjected to a force f in the horizontal direction here due to which the shape of the cube body changes as shown in the red line red lines here which is inclined at an angle angle phi as shown in the figure due to this change in shape the the distance is the is reduced or moved by capital x so the linear strain in the direction of deforming force in the direction is called the longitudinal strain and in a direction perpendicular if the direction the change is in the perpendicular direction that is in the opposite direction then it is called lateral strain the second type of strain is volumetric strain 
volumetric strain is equal to change in volume divided by original volume that is equal to delta V by V that is original volume. The third type of strain is shearing strain. It is defined as an angle in radians through which a plane perpendicular to the fixed surface of the cubical body gets turned under the effect of the tangent fo tangential force. Therefore, phi is equal to x by L. So, in the figure above, if you correlate phi angle phi, then it comes to phi is equal to x by L. When a beam is bent in a building, in a civil engineering structure, when a beam is bent, then both compression strain as well as extension strain is produced. Now we will study about Hooke's law. Robert Hooke, an English physicist who lived between 1635 to 1703 AD, performed experiments on springs and found that the elongation, elongation means change in the length, produced in a body is proportional to applied force on the load. That is, the change in length is proportional to the applied force. In 7, 1676, he presented his law of elasticity. Now it is called Hooke's law. According to this law, within the elastic limit, stress is proportional to strain. That is, stress is proportional. This sign is for proportionality is proportional to strain. That can be written as stress is equal to K into strain, where the constant K is called modulus of elasticity. Sometimes in some of the books, this letter they are using symbol E. But here in NCRT book, we use k, small k. It is its value, the value of k depends on the nature of the material of the body and the manner in which the body is deformed. The value of modulus of elasticity depends upon the nature of the body, nature of the material of the body and the manner in which the body is deformed. Its value depends on the temperature of the body. So this constant is also dependent upon the temperature. Its value is independent of the dimensions of the body. There are three moduli of elasticity, namely Young's modulus, bulk modulus and modulus of rigidity corresponding to three types of strain. These we are going to study in our subsequent videos. Hooke's law is an empirical law and is found to be valid for most of the material. However, there are some materials which do not exhibit this linear relationship. That means this relationship is stress is equal to K into strain is not applicable for some of the materials. With this, we conclude part one of the mechanical properties of solids. In the next video, we will study about stress strain curve, elastic moduli, applications of elastic behavior of materials. Till then, goodbye.